Okay, so hello again, grade 9. Today we're going to continue what we started with before, talking about karyotype, the reproduction, and genetics, third part. Our objectives for today are to identify between a haploid cell and a diploid cell, and to identify the types of uh, cells presented in the body, the body cells, whether um, the somatic ones or the sex ones. Now, we reached this question, uh, which uh, tells us before to compare between those, these two karyotypes, karyotype A and karyotype B. Now, if we do a simple comparison between both of them, we should say that uh, what are the similarities and what are the differences. Now, both of them, as we see, they're made up of 23 pairs of chromosomes. Here we have 22 pairs of autosomes, and here we have 22 pairs of autosomes, and one pair, which is the gonosome. In this case, it is XY, and this this case is also XY, it is a similarity. Both have the chromosomes arranged in decreasing orders, in pairs, and in the same position of the centromes. Now, what is different between karyotype A and karyotype B? If we notice, is that here, for example, chromosome pair number one is made up of two copies, and here it's made up of two copies, but the difference is that here, each copy is made up of one chromatid only, whereas in karyotype B, each chromosome is made up of two chromatids, and that's the difference between the first and the second karyotype. But if we ask a question, say, um, is karyotype A and B belonging to a haploid or a diploid cell? Both of them belong to a diploid cell because each chromosome has two copies, one that is maternal and one that is paternal. Now, moving on, whereas if we compare between these two karyotypes, we notice that uh, here, also chromosome, for example, number one is made up of two chromatids, and here is made up of one chromatid. But what's different between these two karyotypes and the ones before is that each chromosome here is made up of only one copy and not two. And this is the haploid cell. So a diploid cell is a cell where the chromosomes in pairs are made up of two copies, one that is maternal and one that is paternal. Whereas, when we look at the diploid cells, which we will know later on um, their function, we notice that each chromosome is made up of only one copy, even reaching the sex chromosome, which is in this case, for example, X, and here it is X. The difference is that here we have two chromatids, and here we have one chromatid. So, how do we obtain such a cell, and what's the purpose of this cell? We're going to see. So... Uh, what we conclude from the above, from the above karyotypes, or if we sum up what, what we were talking about, is that we have two types of cells. We said the diploid cell and the haploid cell. Now, when we see a chromosome, even one chromatid or two chromatids, but made up of only one copy, like remember the example of the socks, the pair of socks, which are two copies. Now, if we look and see only one, one copy, it means that it is haploid, like such a case, for example, here. This is a haploid cell. For example, we, ha we might have chromosome number 1 and chromosome number 13, but each is presented in one copy. Here, the same idea, but instead of two chromatids, one chromatid. Whereas in a diploid cell, no, we can see the pair of socks, the two copies. So we can see from each chromosome, we have two copies here, and the other chromosome, we have only two. We have also two copies, uh, like in this cell as well. So it's necessary to differentiate between the following forms of chromosomes. If each chromosome is made up of one copy in a cell, it means that this cell is haploid. Whereas if each chromosome is made up of two copies, this means that the cell is what is a diploid cell. Now, we're going to talk about the types of body cells. In our body, we have cells known as the somatic cells, and we have cells known as the germline cells or the sex cells. The somatic cells, what characterizes them is that they're diploid, such as the skin cells, muscle cells, the liver cells, intestinal cells, nerve cells, and so on. They undergo mitosis only, meaning they multiply. Like when we lose a skin cell during summer, if we had a kind of tan or something, uh, we will not peel our skin forever. No, <laughs> and later on, we will have the uh, skin cells uh, multiplying and recovering the cells that were dead or lost. Uh, whereas the germline cells, they could be diploid or haploid. 
such as the sperm cells and the ovum cells, known as the spermatogonia or ogonia in, um, in Bac 2, in grade 12 and 11, we take these in more details. Um, they undergo mitosis and meiosis, and this is what characterizes them, the meiosis. Later on, we're going to stress on what mitosis is and what meiosis is. The diploid cells are the cells in which we find pairs of homologous chromosomes, same chromosomes. Each pair consists of one that, uh, that is maternal and one that is paternal. Whereas the haploid cells are the cells that only have one single chromosome, as we said before. Now, another application, if we look at these karyotypes here, and we want to identify whether this karyotype is haploid or a diploid or belongs to a haploid or a diploid cell. If we look at this karyotype, we see that each chromosome is presented in two copies. Now, some students might think that this is one chromosome. No, actually, this is not a centromere. It's not attached. So this is a copy of a chromosome, and this is the other one here. We have so from each chromosome, we have two copies, which makes it a diploid cell. Looking at the second one, also we can notice that each chromosome is made up of two copies number 13, even the sex chromosomes, so this is a diploid cell. Whereas the third one, we notice that each chromosome is made up of one copy only, so this makes it a haploid cell. Um, let's observe the fourth one. Okay, so uh, also each chromosome is made up of one copy, making it a haploid cell. Okay, oh, the, the other one was made up of two chromatids. Chromosomes were made up of two chromatids, whereas here, each chromosome is made up of one chromatid only. But also one copy, which makes it haploid. The last one, if we look at it from far away, we can see that it is a diploid cell because each chromosome is made up of two copies. So I think by now, we know the difference between what a diploid cell is and what a haploid cell is. Now, this is a question, the official exams. Honestly, I do not remember the, the date, the year, because I've been teaching grade nine for uh, five to six years, but then I stopped two years. So these two years, my memory, I get a little bit, uh, and I forgot the year. Anyway, you students, you know it more, because you should be studying by now in the, official exams, especially the lessons that we already taken before. Okay, so the opposite document represents the number of chromosomes contained in the body cells of some animal species. And what we mentioned before is that the number of chromosomes, which is 46 in humans, is not the same in animals, so it's different from one species to another. This question is about this uh, issue. Is the number of chromosomes the same in these species? Let's look. Uh, referring to the document, we have to justify our answer. So, uh, since we look at the number of chromosomes, we notice that in Drosophila it's 8, and in Frog it's 24, in the hen it's 32, in the cat 38, so it's different from one species to another. So it's not the same, and we give examples. We say no, since the frog has 24 chromosomes, whereas the hen has 32, while the horse has 64 chromosomes, and so on. Explain why the number of chromosomes is expressed by two and in these cells. So why is this written? Why do we say two and? Why do we say two and equals eight, two and equals 24, or even two and equals 46 like in humans? Why do we say this? Well, we already said that each chromosome is made up of two copies, remember? One copy that is maternal and one copy that is paternal. So this 2N represents the two copies, meaning that one is maternal and one that is paternal, and it means that the chromosomes are presented in pairs. Indicate the value of N for each of the following species, the Drosophila, the hen, and the horse. The Drosophila, 2N equals how much equals 8? So if 2N equals 8, then N equals how much should be good at math? Is your biology teacher good at math or not? Um, well, so I'm good in math, I think. Yeah, let's try. 2n equals 8, so n equals 8 over 2, which is 4. See, I told you I'm good in math. The hand, 2n equals 32, so the n equals 32 by 2, which is 16. Um, the horse, we have 64, 2n equals 64, so the n will be 64 by 2, 30. 
very good in math, actually. Now my math teachers, my friends, will be happy. Name the cells that have N chromosomes. So what do we call the cells in the body that have N chromosomes? Like these are the haploid cells or the sex cells, the germline cells, remember? Okay, let's move on to another question. Uh, this document shows a set of chromosomes in the cell of a panther, um, the team panther, and a kind of uh, the panther. Okay, how do we call these kinds of documents? How do we call, or what do we call um, these kinds of documents? This is a karyotype, okay? A karyotype showing the chromosomes in a cell of a panther. By the way, Many biology questions, we can take the answer sometimes, when, especially when they tell us to pick up answers. Um, the answer could be in the question, whether a title or if we're picking up symptoms of a disease or someone, it depends on the question itself. For that reason, I stress on the idea or on the importance of reading the question carefully. How does the size of chromosomes vary starting with pair number one? So looking at pair number one, going down to pair number 18, we notice that it, it's differing um, in size from the largest to the smallest. So it, so it is arranged in the decreasing order. How many chromosomes does this mammal species have? Let's see. So we have 18 autosomes and we have one gonosome. So we have 19 pairs, making it 19 times 2. I just said that I'm good in math. Okay, you do the math. <laughs> okay, so we can say you know, it has 19 pairs or if they want the number. Multiply it by two. I will not open calculator. <laughs> Why cannot this uh, uh, document be mistaken for a set of a human cells chromosome? Uh, why couldn't it be a human cells chromosome? Because we already said that in a human cell, uh, we have 46 chromosomes. So this definitely couldn't be a human cell. Now, we already talked about diseases, like, like if we have a missing chromosome, there will be a disease. If we have an extra chromosome, only one, also there will be a disease or a syndrome. So here we have a lot of chromosomes missing, so definitely it doesn't belong to a human. Um, is the concern um, panther a male or a female one? Let's see. Now, looking at the last chromosome, which is the sex chromosome or the gonosome, since, please do not say since it's X and Y, it's a male, no. Since they're not homologous, one is long and one is short, making it X and Y, so it belongs to a male, okay? So non-homologous chromosomes in the gonosome, okay? Now, exercise, which is also an exercise that is in the official exams. It represents um, fertilization. We have here a sperm cell and an ovum cell. If we are to analyze this picture, after fertilization, what do you expect the zygote will be? Will it be a normal zygote or an abnormal? Look at the ovum. The ovum here, this question, I think it's uh, better to be um, answered after taking meiosis and mitosis. It's better. Anyway, but let's do like, a kind of analysis or guessing. Here, will this, what will be the sex of the child? Now, since we have Y coming from the sperm cell, so definitely it's going to be a male because when there is Y, then it is a male. Um, but the question is, is it going to be a normal male? Here we have two X in the ovum, so both of them will be transmitted to the zygote, as if we have X, X, and Y. Let's remember together, when we have X, X, and Y, what kind of disease is that? It is uh, Kleinfelter's disease. And by the way, I remember it, Kleinfelter, it is named after Dr. Harry Kleinfelter, his family named Kleinfelter, um, because he was the first one who identified this disease. Um, so, anyway, will the zygote be normal? No, XX and Y Kleinfelter syndrome, okay? What is the gamete responsible for this anomaly? Is it the sperm cell or the ovum? Well, definitely it's the ovum in this case because it is giving two X cells. They might not have a female problem. No, sometimes the, the male might have the problem of medical gender bias here. Okay. I will go into the details of this question later on after taking meiosis and mitosis. Now, I hope after this video, you guys are able to identify between a haploid cell and a diploid cell. And uh, remember, 
to review what the diseases are.